Welcome to the Si Se Puede podcast on the Si Se Puede. Today, we're going to be talking about when people pass away and funerals. As many of you know, man, that's one thing that's guaranteed in life is that we're all going to cross over to the other side one day and like like myself and maybe a lot of you guys listening, you guys have been to a lot of funerals throughout your life. And this last month, it's been a really tough month for my family. My My wife lost three family members in one month so this is something that's kind of i've been living inside of this type of feeling for the like the last month and a half or two months and i want to share it with you guys you know i think there's is a subject that needs to be talked about but we're going to start off with cesar chavez there's two people i want to talk about today my first experience with death if i really really walk through the chambers of my heart man i, I really got to go back to when did i experience death for the very first time and I want to share that with you guys but also I want to talk about Cesar Chavez and specifically specifically the wooden casket man I don't know if you guys ever seen pictures of his funeral I don't know if you've ever seen pictures of the the thousands of people that were walking behind his casket but it's a sight to see man but I remember the very first time that I was going through a book of Cesar Chavez that I got from the library and I was just reading about him and reading about him and I got to the page where it's like where he passed away and and they showed pictures of the wooden casket and I was like oh my goodness what a humble ending what a humble ending why why didn't he why did he do that why did he get buried in a wood I couldn't understand he was such a great man he was such a a person that deserved a a different type of casket at least that's what i thought you know but i really started examining the situation and i was like what a powerful statement this man did throughout his life and even to the very end you know his brother richard chavez correct me if i'm wrong i believe he was the one that even made him that wooden casket and it was just a humble sight to see man like whoa that's that's humbling, man. That's humbling. I mean, people, you know, and it's not to say a humble casket or or a, or a really nice casket. You know, it depends, you know, how you want to be remembered and where the condition of your heart was. And I'm not saying this is good or bad, but I remember when I seen James Brown. Y'all know who James Brown is. When he passed away, he he had a golden casket, gold plated casket. You know what I'm saying? I remember looking at that casket and I was like wow what a celebrity what a what a rock star what a what a man right everybody knows who james brown is everybody loves james brown but when i seen cesar chavez casket <laughs> i was like it made me want to cry i was like why why you know this is it, it was it was such a powerful humble statement that it's like it shocks you it shocks you man and i'll never forget that about cesar chavez that wooden coffin what a statement till the very end que descanse en paz cesar chavez y que viva cesar chavez and second i want to talk about the first time i experienced death man you know i've gone through so many funerals i've gone through so many i had to walk through memory lane so many times with people that i loved and you know when, when somebody passes away you got to sit down and boom here comes all the memories here comes all the thoughts. Here comes all the the laughter and the memories. And you got to walk through memory lane. And it's rough, man. It's rough. Like I said, this this last two months have been rough in my family. My wife lost three family members in one month. So this is something that I've kind of been dealing with. And and it's been on my heart, man. Death and funerals, you know what I'm saying? And I try to, I, I go, I go inside of my heart. I, I try to go inside of the chambers of my heart and say, you know what? When was the first time I experienced death? And I was really sitting down and thinking and meditating. And I was like, I know exactly when the very first time into this day, it still stings as much as it did when that situation happened. And the first time I ever experienced death was 1987. I was seven years old. I was in second grade. I was right there in the south side of Modesto at Fairview School. And I remember coming in from recess 
And I remember my teacher was crying and we kind of all got Indian style. You know how they used to sit you down as kids like Indian style on the ground. And they're like, the teacher was crying. And, and um, <clears throat> I'm just going to say his nickname in respect to the family. But it's somebody I've never forgot. Like I said, to this day, I could shed a tear right now if I really go inside my heart and really start thinking about it. Because it hurt, man. Because it was a kid that I used to play with. It was a kid that was in my classroom. He was a kid. You know what I'm saying? And a tragedy happened. And to this day, it's still a tragedy in my heart. And it still makes me sad. But she said, Bucky died. And I, and I remember sitting exactly in that classroom. And that was the very first encounter ever in my life that I sat there and said, where did, what, how, how can this be? Where, where did he go? What do you mean he's not coming back? And to this day, to this day, it hurts, man, because that was the very first time I experienced death. And I've experienced death, friends, family, so many. Like I said, we just lost three family members in the last month. But this situation, the very first time I experienced death was something that to this day stings. It does, man. It does because, you know, when you're young, your friends die, older people die. But the hardest thing is when you're older. I'm, I'm already in my mid-40s when you see a young person die because you're like, man, they didn't even really get to live their life. And and I'm about to share this this other story that is connected to this that's going to blow your socks off, right? It's crazy how how coincidence and how it's meant to be situations in life. I'm not saying him passing it was meant to be, but later on in life, the person that I met, let me share this with you guys real quick. So 20, 25 years later, you know, I was growing up. I was in Modesto and I went to a tattoo shop and I was getting tatted. And the guy that I came across, I'm not going to say his name. He knows who he is. We became good friends, man. We we were vibing. He's really a calm guy. He's more of a listener and I'm more of a talker. So I think that's why we kind of got along. But re- realistically, his attention he was giving me it was like a big brother attention. And man, I got a lot of respect for him and we started hanging out. And he was there in a time in my life where I was going through a lot. And, and you know, sometimes when you're going through a lot, you end up at the tattoo shop. You know what I'm saying? And that's the kind of situation it was at the time. And we were we were cool, man. We became friends, and he was looking out for me, and and he was tatting me up. He put the Kelly Bear on my hand, and he did other work on me. And um, and I remember I was taking him through through Modesto. I was like, "Hey, bro, look, I you know, cause I, I grew up in the projects. You know, I was born, and my first home was in the West Side projects, right there in the West Side. I took him to the projects. I was kind of letting him know where 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 I where I grew up and, and and where I was from, you know, like this is where I grew up, this is the house I lived in. I was kind of just giving him memory lane through my life. I took him through the projects, I took him through Sneed Drive. I said, "Look, I used to live right here. I used to live right here. I used to play right here." And and then I took him and I was right there by James Marshall and I was like, "Hey, bro, it's crazy, man, because when I was a kid, I had a friend that that he had an accident right here and he died." And all of a sudden, he just looked at me and he's like, pull over, bro, pull over. And this is a man that's has a lot of self-control. This is a man that is really quiet and he just, he listens. He's more of a listener. But at that moment, he was telling me like, pull over, bro. And I was like, what's up, man? I was, he's like, bro, the person you're talking about, that's my brother. That's my brother, bro. I go, no way, bro. That was my friend, bro. That's my, that's my boy still in my, in my heart. He's still my, fr-. like, bro, I never forgot him. Ended up being his brother which his i didn't know him that was his older brother he is older than me and i'm like what a coincidence that later on in life i met this dude that today is one of my best friends somebody i highly respect somebody that man there's certain people that that i vibe with in a good way and and he's one of those guys man and i couldn't believe that that was his brother and 20 25 years before i met him i was hanging out with his brother and the tragedy happened to his brother but then 25 years later, I meet him. We become friends, not knowing where, 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 what school I went to or what or what or when. But I had this memory in my heart. And, and I told him, I was like, bro, that was my that's my that was my friend, dog. That was I know him. You know what I'm saying? Like I got pictures of him. I have my class, my my you know, when you have your class picture of your of your um of second grade and all that. I was like, bro, I, got, I still got it. And I showed him and he couldn't believe it. What a coincidence. Right. Right. What a trip, man, how life is sometimes, you know. 
but that was truly the first time I experienced death and I've have have experienced it a lot after you know I got into the point where I don't even like going to funerals I know I, I even family like especially very close family it's hard to go man it's hard to lay them down it's hard it's just you know when people pass away man it's not easy you know rest in peace Bucky man forever in my heart I will never forget you buddy never and you know back to the Cesar Chavez the the wooden coffin the wooden coffin right what a humble statement what a humble man what a man what a what a gosh what a man what a man I wish I could have been there I wish I could have just the pictures humbled me you know what I'm saying and I'm just sharing these thoughts with you guys because like I said man I've been going through funeral back to back you know and 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 actually I heard a friend talking about his loss he lost somebody in his family a couple of days ago and it just kind of triggered me it kind of just opened up that chamber of my heart about death you know cuz I'm going through these three losses and he's going through his loss and then I, you know you kind of go through memory lane and you start thinking about things you know what I'm saying but coffins memories the way people remember you I'll never forget that wooden coffin I will never forget Bucky never you know what I'm saying I will always look at that wooden coffin that Cesar Chavez got laid in it and, and got put to rest and like something so powerful in my heart I'm like man if I ever pass away I told my wife that's exactly how I want my casket anyways my friends with that I leave you till the next time always remember si se puede Always remember, El Pueblo Unido jamás será vencido. Walking through memory lane with you guys, and I'm out.